What I'd like to do as a, a first order of business is thank DLP Technologies for sponsoring this panel discussion. John Breifogel is the lead guy from DLP who will be moderating today's discussion, which is about new technology. Specifically around uh, uh, virtualization, which uh, for our part of DLP Technologies we're very involved with. Um, we're also going to be talking about uh, uh, social media and its impact uh, on uh, technology development. My thoughts on virtualization is, yeah, you need it if you are going to be at the infrastructure level, but when you look at cloud computing, you really need to start at a very high level, your business process, software as a service, and then work your way down. Larry, what, what do you see as the drivers for uh, cloud computing implementation in most organizations? Look for it for business agility. What I see most people doing today is business continuity, data backup, um, you know, some things with collaboration, which includes social networking. Uh, I'll ask Rob Michelle from Bartlett. Um, one of the drivers for you guys, uh, if I understand it correctly, was you were making a move, you are building out a new data center, and uh, you were looking at, at data center, you know, uh, utilization, and uh, that was kind of your, your driver for, for virtualization. Well, we were going from a office where we had two floors and we were going down to one floor where we were moving to so the space for the data center was going to be a lot less. To start working towards you know where we wanted to be virtually if we had gone uh, server by server uh, there's no way our data center the new one would have held all the servers we needed to uh, accomplish everything. Uh, Scott Migo, I'm with Fifth Third Processing Solutions which is uh, separate from Fifth Third Bank we're in the process of actually separating from the bank so um, we're spending a lot of time virtualizing the data center, making sure we have the right um, infrastructure in place. And uh, before that, I spent about 20 years at Nationwide Insurance. We, we took about, well, it was about 6,000 servers. When I left, we were down to about 3,000. So, um, you know, huge, huge difference. And I think now, uh, Larry and I were talking about earlier, from a cloud standpoint, we're starting to look at things, um, talk about reasons why you would go to cloud. We're starting to look at uh, certain applications that are coming on as we're trying to make this split and say what's really important that we put in our data center versus maybe something we can put up in the cloud right now, get it kind of out of our view while we're making all these changes and moving things. John Osborne, Kroger Company. Um, I've been out of the operations side for a while, but um, we started a virtualization program at Kroger a couple of years back. You know, we did it for cost. Uh, disaster recovery, you know, but it gave us the flexibility to take 20, 30,000 desktops out of the store, put thin clients out there. Um, it, we can roll out applications a lot faster. It reduces the overall support organization. Hi, my name is Krista Nair, and I'm the CEO of Bootcamp Digital, and we do social media training and consulting. So I think, you know, per when we did the show of hands, if you look at how things are netting out, marketing right now is probably one of the main groups that's really jumped into social media. And I'll talk about that first, but I think as importantly, if not more importantly, there are a lot of internal, you know, enterprise type opportunities for social media to play a role in an organization. From a marketing perspective, there's obviously a lot of opportunities for companies to use social media to grow their business online. And we've seen a lot of different examples. So for example, the Dell outlet has sold over $3 million on Twitter. The other area I think that's relevant in social media is looking at some internal opportunities. Um, first of all, for recruiting, there are huge opportunities to use LinkedIn. A lot of recruiters have reported getting better results by posting on LinkedIn or by using it as a solution versus other online applications. From the perspective of internal collaboration and looking at how to take some of these social media tools that are popular online and bring them into your organization, I think that's where a lot of the next generation social media applications are going. Social Social media, mobile applications, and virtualization. So how does that all come together? If you need to connect with a remote workforce, what everybody has is these smartphones. And with the cost dropping drastically with HTC building the Android phones, things like this, it's going to be the primary mechanism of communicating with that amorphous temporary workforce that you have out there. In our, our Greyhound business, for example, 
we are putting Wi-Fi on 1,600 coaches. So that's 1,600 mobile networks. Um, we are developing applications to run on our mobile networks. On the school bus side, uh, where we have 60,000 buses running around uh, U.S. and Canada, uh, we're developing applications, of course, that are GPS enabled, not only for doing things like tracking the buses and, and you know, running uh, performance reports and, and, and helping us run our internal operations, but of course now parents want, uh, they want bus locations to be tweeted uh, along the way so they know if the bus is on time or if it's running early. Um, we have school districts that want to know if little Johnny got on the bus at that spot. Hi, my name is Troy Davis. Uh, I'm an uh, independent developer and software architect right now. In terms of cloud technologies, when you're dealing with folks that have vendors or have, uh, and especially in medical care, where you've got regulations that you're dealing with in terms of privacy, how can you moderate the, uh, the abilities that we have with the cloud, which make a lot of economic sense, with the, in some ways, the lack of um, the lack of information or the lack of knowledge about how exactly that can be secured. Second question is, we're all spending a lot of time right now building up infrastructure for using social technologies. Uh, and I've seen, you know, like buttons all over the place and, you know, and follow me on Twitter buttons and f Twitter feeds. And uh, it's all great stuff and it's good technology and we need it. When do we get to the part where we actually start talking about how to build communities? Uh, on the security side, very good question because there are so many standards coming up. One of the things I always tell customers, do not get locked in. Cloud is all about how many vendors you have to deal with with any single problem and how do you make them work together. But how do you do your social networking? And I think Salesforce Chatter is a very good example of that. And then you have the mobile device. So you have a sales rep who's driving by and suddenly a customer says he has a problem and he, that flashes up on his mobile device and he says, oh, I can go to this other customer half hour late, let me go and stop by. Start looking at the new wireless technology, 802.15.4, it's called Zigbee. It's a very holistic approach. You'll start to see devices out there that'll end up in customers' hands that allow them, to, from our perspective, start their shopping experience at home. From a social experience, then they start realizing that their neighbor's buying a certain product and then maybe they need to take a look at it. So I think the first choice for most people should be to try to leverage the existing communities that people have, whether it's B2B or B2C. Social graphing tends to turn out the same way, which is you connect with people similar to you. Building your own community is a lot harder, and I think there's a time and place for it. There are examples of success, but if you think about it, you know, the last time you were going to maybe leave a comment somewhere and they said, oh, come and create an account, right? Right there, I bet you lose over half of the people because people already have profiles on all these sites. You already have more passwords to remember. Uh, and what I see is a lot of people assume that, you know, mobile is going to be your primary device, and I think that's true in certain niches, but not everywhere. I think the primary device is still the person personal computer. And uh, in the digital at home, we're still behind mobile. We're, yet there's a lot of new interaction between um, mobile technologies, uh, web technologies, and our kiosks or our digital signage platforms. There's one thing that everyone on this deck has in, on their body right now, the cell phone. How do you balance the difference between informing and intruding? Thank you all very much uh, on behalf of DLP Technologies and uh, the folks on the panel that gave their time. Thank you all for your interest. Thank you all for your questions. Enjoy the fun.